It's competition day, and at five in the morning, and while the rest of Right to Dream is asleep, these 11 students making their way to a regional championship in robotics illustrate an extraordinary hope for a football academy, especially one based in rural Africa. Two hours later, the girls arrive at the competition site, where many of the bigger teams are already busy with registration. But as the girls set up, the boys are still nowhere to be seen. And as time ticks on, things start to go wrong. Uh-oh, everything is just like going wrong because the boys are not here and the table just collapsed and everything, the laptop and all these stuff came to the floor and we are worried the boys are not going to be on time. The other competitors are looking confident. Hi, my name is Kevin. Um, I'm from the team from SOS HGIC Tema. I think this time around we're looking quite good. Our uh, structure is looking quite steady. And uh, I think in general, we're going to be, I think we're going to come a pretty decent position this time around. With minutes to spare, the boys finally arrive. So apparently we are just like, we just came in and then the power has cut out, the tension is rising, my blood is rushing through my veins really quick, but I'm hoping and praying it's gonna be well. So at the moment, I need to start calibrating, so I'm sorry, I gotta go. So this year, what they've done different is they've cutting off the uh, students participating from the instructors. Yeah, to, to be able to do something like robotics and be top athletes or foot, top football, especially in Ghana. It, I don't think this has ever happened before. And we've been to this competition twice and we are the only athlete students in, in, in this competition, let alone football. Football is one, it's a sport in Ghana that, unlike other sports, is really associated with illiteracy and not being able to read and write. This case, uh, Robin showed us with schools that are very privileged, that are well resourced, and I believe that they will do extremely well by the end of the day. Without warning, the judges announce a change in the rules. Unlike last year when they had a grid or a pattern to follow, this year there were blind spots in it. And uh, those blind spots were decided by a ballot this morning. So it's made a lot of people very nervous. You can see a lot of the teams are quite disoriented. But they still have about uh, 45 minutes to figure it out. So hopefully they should be able to do it. Yeah, it's about five minutes to go and we are going to the washroom for the third time in this morning. Now, the teams must deposit their robots on the stage before the seconds are up. The first round of the competition begins. I'm coming, good for me. Yeah. Yeah, let's go, ready. Check the line, ready. On the count of three, two, one, go. On the count of three, two, one, go. And as the competition gets underway, the nervous energy grows as the teams look on and hold their breath as they wait for their robot, hoping it will finish the course first. but the first Right to Dream robot starts to malfunction. The junior girls are up next. But things start to go badly. Before getting worse. Oh God, um, um, when, when, when I saw our little girls go and the robot leaving the line, I'm, I'm so nervous, I don't know, like, <laughs> I'm so, so nervous. 
So uh, what happened is that when our robot got to the circle, where it's supposed to turn, it turned. But when it got to the second circle for it to turn and follow the T-line, it didn't turn. The senior boys team can only hope for stronger results. Three, two, one, go. So we, we just got the motivation that we can win the tournament because uh, we had a total time of 43.3 seconds, but we made some errors in our programming that led us to touch the robot. So we touched the robot twice and then we still got a chance to win, so we are looking up to it. Come on, Shara, we can do it. With only the final round to go, things finally start to look up for the junior teams. Yeah, so uh, we are to the last round of the competition and there's been some little changes in the competition and now the grid is out and there's some new band and I think I'm very happy that the grid is out because the grid was a little bit complicated but now it's, it's a new test so I, I think our grid is going to be the best. Yeah, yeah so during our rounds Though it was not going well, and by now uh, we are the first in our group, but we don't want that score. So we want to, we hit it um, 52, so we want to get uh, 41. So this is the final score, and we are going for it, and we are going to make it happen. Yeah. The moment has finally come for the junior high school final round, and this time the job of operator falls to Kingsford. In the final section, Nuhu waits to see if his last minute changes have worked. It's paid off. I'm feeling so happy, very, 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 very happy. With the juniors winning, all pressure falls to Isaac's senior team. They sit in second with two teams left to go. Their time has taken shut up the robot into the lead by 10 seconds. We are, we are yet to win. There are other guys come through and they are, they are robots. But I promise you, they can't beat us. Three, two, one, go. Uh, 
um, you know, yeah. we won! We won! We won! We won! We won! Right to Dream will now go on to compete in the national finals. The winner will go on to represent Ghana at the World Championships. Science and robots are not things that the world associate with sport and athletes, especially football. So while the Robotics Club celebrate hours of effort paying off, Right to Dream can celebrate the fact that they have succeeded in a competition that they were never expected to win. One excited jump for the Robotics Club. One enormous stride towards changing the face of football. My name is Dr. Yao Okreku Yurinchi and I'm the National Director for the Robotics Inspired Science Education. I'm very delighted to have had Right to Dream come to this competition. This is not the first time. Um, I think it must be the second or third time and I'm very excited that they have put up this level of, level of performance. I recall visiting the institution and seeing footballers being so excited about science and technology and all of the things that go along with it. For me, it can only get better. I think there are lots of opportunities for these young people, not just in sports or soccer or any of those strands. They can really be great people in the area of science and technology. So I expect the right to dream will represent Ghana in at least two of the international competitions come 2018. Work hard and the sky is the limit. I truly believe everyone has the right to dream.